قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي Tell them, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the soul is a matter of your Lord, my Lord. It is a matter of the unseen. There are 14 places in the Qur'an in which Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentions the question and to address the answer, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala commanded the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, قُلْ يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَنْفَالِ قُلِ الْأَنْفَالُ لِلَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيضِ قُلْ هُوَ أَذَنْ فَاعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيضِ يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الشَّهْرِ الْحَرَامِ قِتَالٍ فِي قُلْ قِتَالٌ فِيهِ كَبِيرٌ So, 14 places the word يَسْأَلُونَكَ is used based on certain questions, certain questions that were posed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was commanded Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam directed to answer these questions. One certain ayah was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord says, أُدْعُونِي Call upon me, I will answer you. This was a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This struck a question to some of the Sahaba and the Sahaba radiallahu anhu asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that أَقَرِيبٌ نُنَاجِيهِ أَمْ بَعِيدٌ نُنَادِيهِ Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala far so that we could call upon him in the form of munajat, meaning in a subtle, secretive conversation? Or is he far that we should call upon him? Munadi. Nida means to call upon loud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي When my servants inquire to you about me, فَإِنِّي قريب. Verily, indeed I am close. This one particular spot, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not direct the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to give the answer, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interjected, based on the other 14, you can say that it was an interjection, interjection. the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was not directed to answer this, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered the question in the first person, فَإِنِّي قَلِي this is ayah number 186 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah number 180, uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 186. This ayah is sandwiched in between the ahkam of fasting in the month of Ramadan. Ayah number 183, Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about certain ahkam, about the person who is fasting, a person who is sick, then Shahru Ramadan الذي أنزل فيه القرآن Then some more ahkam And jumping over ayah number 186, 187 أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ لَيْلَةُ الصِّيَامِ الرَّفَثُ إِلَى نِسَائِكُمْ Spousal relations are permitted for you on the nights of your fast Sandwiched in between all of these legal issues of Ramadan Is this ayah وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي at a mere glance, you would see, you would think that this ayah seems very unconnected to what is going on. Ahkam, legality, legality, all of a sudden in the middle of that dead smack, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about that when you ask, when they ask you of me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دعان, I answer the call of the caller when he calls me. This implies that just as Shahru Ramadan, just as the month of Ramadan is the month of Quran, just as the Quran holds a significant position in the month of Ramadan, just as Qiyam is a significant portion of the month of Ramadan, man qama Ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. This ayah being sandwiched in between all of these ahkam implies the significance of dua. 
Dua is a form of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a very close relationship between dua and fasting. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that thalathatun la turaddu da'watuhum. Three people, their calls are never rejected. One of them, al-imamun, al-imamul adil, a just ruler. Number two, al-sa'im, hatta yuftu. A person who fasts until he breaks his fast. And the third one is a person who has been oppressed. يَرْفَعُهُمَا فَوْقَ الْغَمَامِ Their du'as are taken above the clouds. The skies are opened up. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعِزَّتِي لَأَنصُرَنَّكَ وَلَوْ بَعْدَ حِينَ I swear by my honor, I will help you even if it comes after some time. Just as we... Just as we work behind establishing and developing our prayer, you know, we, we practice our prayer to develop a devotion, a khushu', a khudu', just as we work hard behind our recitation of the Qur'an and we take it to the next level, from reciting to memorizing to understanding to implementing to spreading, likewise dua is something that needs development. It needs our attention and it needs some work. And inshallah for the next 29 to 30 days in the mornings, I'm going to be dedicating a few minutes to talk about the mindset, the frame of mind when it comes to dua, the concept of dua, and the framework of dua in the hopes that inshallah as the month of Ramadan goes, goes along, we will be able to focus and prepare and understand how to make a heart-filled dua and communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also with that, every single day, I want to go over three of the attributes and names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every morning, three, and in the last ten nights, four, which will give us a complete 9900. And inshallah, I'm going to, you know, dive into a basic summary of the meaning. So inshallah, today we're going to be starting off with Allah, Ar-Rahman, and Ar-Rahim. Every day, when I, before I get started, we are going to go over all of the names that we have gone over thus far. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has stated, Hadith Abu, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 100 names minus one, meaning 99. Whoever memorizes them, ahsaha. Whoever gathers them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him entrance into Jannah. So, Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Jazakumullahu khair. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi,